It's one of the most important questions we ever ask. What will happen after we die? Is it just like a candle going out? Or is there something more beyond the grave? And how can we know? At the centre of the Christian message is the claim that Jesus rose from the dead. If he did, this means that there is life after death, and that we can know about it through him. But can we take this claim seriously? That's what these programmes are about. We'll be talking to experts who've studied the historical evidence closely. But first, we ask them why it matters. There are many mysterious things in the world. Perhaps the story about Jesus rising from the dead is just another event that we can't explain. What difference does it make to us today? I think we've seen quite a cultural shift in the last generation or so from people insisting that the only things that can happen are things that we can quantify, things that we can weigh and put in balances and systems and so on, through to a much more postmodern, loose awareness that actually the world is full of very strange things, all sorts of odd things happen, um, and, and we've rather dismissed those and screened them out. And so people might well then say, so Jesus is just one guru among many, the resurrection may or may not have happened, but so what, all sorts of odd things happen. However, the Judeo-Christian scheme of thought always has been that history has been moving in a particular direction and that there are certain things which the God who made the world and uh, is basically steering the history, for better and for worse, um, wanted to happen and is, is causing to happen. And the early Christian claim was not, well, Jesus happened to have risen from the dead and so that was a miracle, but then there are lots of miracles, but rather that this is actually the turning point of history. This is the moment when a great door swings open that has been shut from the very beginning, because nobody has ever come back from the grave before. The Greeks and the Romans talked about people coming back from the grave as a kind of, wouldn't it be exciting if, but nobody ever actually said it had happened, and indeed many of them were quite emphatic that it couldn't and wouldn't and didn't. So when the Christians said not only that it would happen to all people in the future, but that it had happened to this one person in the middle of history, they were conscious of making, and we should be conscious that they knew they were making, the most extraordinary claim that something one-off has happened but not as a bizarre freak accident, as it were, rather the central, climactic, decisive moment when the God who made the world in the first place launched his new creation. And surprisingly, a lot of Christians don't think about all that when they get to Easter Day, but that ought to be the very heart of it. This is the beginning of God's new world. It comes as the climax to Jesus of Nazareth's own unparalleled life and ministry. This is a man who thought of himself as the Messiah long promised to Israel, as the unique Son of God, and as the Son of Man, which had been prophesied by the prophet Daniel, to whom all judgment and authority and dominion would be given. This man was crucified because of these allegedly blasphemous claims. If this man has been raised from the dead, then the God whom he had allegedly blasphemed has publicly and unambiguously vindicated those claims. So in its religio-historical context, this event is of tremendous importance. The resurrection is not an event that hangs out there in space without any relevance. The resurrection is an event that is tied inextricably to the person of Jesus. The way the New Testament argues time and time again is because Jesus has been raised from the dead, that shows that he is who he says he is, or that shows that salvation is available, or that shows that eternal life is a reality, or that shows that believers will be raised like Jesus. So in the New Testament, over 300 verses on this topic, the resurrection is tied to almost every major area of theology and almost every major area of practice. So it's not I mean, it's so far from not being relevant to other areas, exactly the opposite. It fuels every other area, both, both theoretically and practically. I think the resurrection of Jesus from the dead is hugely significant to the foundation of the Christian faith. It was the Apostle Paul who wrote that if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then our hope is in vain. It's significant because 
um, so much of the, the truth of who Christ was and who he claimed to be is staked in a historical event. And the claim is made, this actually happened, and we can know that, we can investigate whether it happens or not and draw a conclusion on the basis of evidence. So unlike lots of other um, religions where there is a, a, an assertion might be made that sounds very marvellous or supernatural and there's really no way of knowing whether it happened or not, in the Christian faith, the assertion is that this miraculous event, the resurrection of Jesus, actually did happen in history. And we can use our minds, we can look at evidence and draw a conclusion about whether that's true or not. Jesus rising from the dead isn't just a mystery that we can't explain. It means that God is real, there is life after death, and that we can know about it through Jesus. It confirms that Jesus is the Son of God. It's the most important thing that's ever happened, the turning point of history. But many people today think that what we know about the world scientifically rules out any possibility that Jesus rose from the dead. So next time, we'll look at the claim that science makes it impossible. What will happen after we die? We started these programs by saying that it's one of the most important questions we can ever ask. At the heart of the Christian message is the claim that Jesus rose from the dead. This is the central moment of history. It confirms God's reality. It confirms that Jesus is the Son of God. And it confirms that there is life after death. So what do you think? Did Jesus really rise from the dead? And if he did, how does this change things? The people we've talked to in these programmes have spent their lives studying the evidence. We asked them what difference it makes to them personally. In 1995, I watched while my wife died of stomach cancer. It was an agonizing death. Thankfully, she wasn't in a lot of pain. But she, she was of small stature anyway, and she lost about half her body weight. And it was just agonizing for me to see her just waste away like this. And, and we were very close, and I had four children at home, and the youngest was only nine years old. And I think about Paul's words in 1 Thessalonians where Paul says, when, people, when believers die, believers grieve. We mourn, but Paul says believers don't mourn as those who have no hope. Do you ever think about that? To mourn with hope or to mourn without hope? There's all the difference in the world. Jesus wept over the death of his friend Lazarus, even though he was just going to raise him from the dead in a matter of minutes. So grieving is not fun, but grieving with eternal hope makes all the difference in the world. Just under a year ago, I had the great privilege of taking my father's funeral. My father was 91, and he had lived a long, good life. He'd been a prisoner of war, suffered greatly, and had come back and had quietly got on and made a life and made a home and brought up his family and had seen children, grandchildren, and happily great-grandchildren. And to be honest, if I didn't believe in the resurrection... The funeral would have meant one thing for me. Because I do believe in the resurrection, the funeral meant something totally and utterly different. And it, though, of course, it was hugely sad to be saying goodbye to my great father, who I'm really grateful for, um, I have a sense of saying good night and see you in the morning. To know that Jesus rose from the dead changes everything in my life. Life often is difficult. All sorts of things come. Loss of job, loss of income, loss of a loved one, diseases, uh, families blowing up, uh, you know, relationships. Uh, these things are very trying in our lives. And sometimes God just seems quiet and absent. To know that Jesus rose from the dead, though, makes all the difference because it tells me that I matter to God, that he really cares for me. And it tells me that this life is not the end of things. We're going to spend a whole lot more time with God within eternity than we are on this earth. 
So it helps me to put things in perspective and to understand that this life is just a, a proving ground to mold me and, and to, to make me more like Jesus and to appreciate more of who God is. If the resurrection of Jesus really happened, then it is fraught with significance, both for mankind in general, as well as for each of us individually. In general, it means that the claims of Jesus of Nazareth were true, that this man was not a blasphemer. He really was the Son of God. And therefore, Jesus holds the key that unlocks the door to eternal life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he who lives and believes in me shall never die. So this holds out the hope of eternal life and relationship with God. It also means that there is going to be complete spiritual, physical, and psychological healing for us. Jesus' resurrection body was the prototype for our own resurrection bodies. The Christian hope is not of a disembodied existence, a soul that flies off to some ethereal realm. We will have supernatural bodies like Jesus that will inhabit a renewed creation. And in this transformed world, we will be freed from every disability, uh, from muscular dystrophy and multiple sclerosis and mental retardation and cerebral palsy to your bad back or your lumbago. Everything will be completely physically healed and what a hope that is. But also psychological healing. Every one of us is psychologically broken, I think. We all carry emotional scars from our childhood and from experiences in life that have shaped us in different ways. And there will be complete psychological healing in the resurrection as well. We'll become transparent, open, whole people, freed from every kind of neurosis and anxiety and emotional difficulty that makes life so hard here. And then, of course, spiritual healing, freedom from sin, uh, now to live righteous, pure, uh, lives that are pleasing to God. So there is tremendous personal hope, I think, as a result of the resurrection of Jesus. And I'm so glad that God has chosen to vindicate Jesus in this very public way as a basis for the wonderful Christian hope that we as Christians entertain. The great turning point in human history, the moment when everything changed, was when Jesus came out of the tomb on Easter morning. We live in a world which fools itself that the great turning point in history came in Europe and America in the 18th century, when we had what was called the Enlightenment. And with our new ideas and our new science and our new democracies, etc., we were actually going to solve the problems of the world. If you look back at the last couple of hundred years, you say, well, give me a break. If that's called solving the problems of the world, then we're going to have to think a bit better in the future. But actually, that's because the Enlightenment has offered a parody of Christianity. The Enlightenment, therefore, wants to rubbish the resurrection because if the resurrection happened, it means that that was the great turning point of history, not Europe in the 18th century. And so the agenda for Christians today, and this I think is, is very powerful for me right now, is to go back and re-inhabit the truth that God's new world was born, not when certain European thinkers had some bright ideas 200 years ago, but when Jesus came out of the tomb on Easter morning. And as we learn to live out of that belief, out of that event, then that is the way in which God's kingdom is going to come on earth as in heaven. The resurrection makes a huge difference to me personally because I'm not interested in um, following a religion based on um, somebody's ideas or because my parents have told me something or on something mythological, as uplifting as that may or may not be. The uniqueness of the Christian faith is that at the heart of it there is this claim that it is actually true and real and that the events happened in history and that we can know that. So when I make a claim about Jesus Christ and his ability to save me through his death on the cross 
and uh, his promise that I can be forgiven for what I have done and I can be with him in eternity even though I'm a sinful person. That, that promise that he makes is not pie in the sky, that is actually rooted in truth and reality. He came in history, he lived, he died on a Roman cross and then he was risen from the dead and that actually happened in history. So his claims are, are staked in verifiable evidence so that what I believe is actually true. It's not delusion, it's not fantasy, it's not um, tradition of my family, it's, it's actually true and real. That's the difference the resurrection makes.